Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. If you missed the third quarter between the Suns and the Warriors last night, well it was a doozy. And again, whenever the Warriors go up against a team that's average on defense or worse, expect the fireworks. And I'm going to show you what happened in the first quarter, which instantly led me to believe that they were going to blow this game open. It's just a question of when. And when they get on a roll like that, it's beautiful basketball to watch and something that no team can stop very easily. Before we break into the footage, I wanted to point out the in-game splits for the Warriors. Coming out of halftime, you can see how the third quarters end up being their best. While they have a higher net rating in first quarters, the third is where we see their highest effective field goal and true shooting percentages. When the other team tries to adjust out of halftime, they up their pace to 103.49 in the third, which would be higher than their already league-leading pace for a whole game. And I had tweeted out after the first quarter that this game was already over even though Phoenix was actually up by two. The reason for this is when you looked at the kind of shots the Warriors were getting, it was clear the Suns weren't doing much to stop them from getting the exact looks the Warriors wanted. Phoenix just got lucky that Golden State missed a whole bunch of them, and I could see that it was only a matter of time until these shots started falling. Turns out, they started hitting in the second quarter, but that was nothing compared to what we saw when they came out of the locker room at halftime. The Warriors broke right into the second half with a simple zipper cut by Clay, which opens up good low post position for Bogut on his screen. The curry Clay elbow split is right out of the triangle in Princeton offenses, and teams have yet to provide a good answer to stop it. It's hard enough to beat the Warriors when you don't make mistakes, but when Brandon Knight tries to throw a 30-foot cross-court pass on the run with no arc on it, Clay is all over it. Since it was a 4-on-1, there wasn't much Bledsoe could do on the other side, although he could have stopped the ball earlier and prayed. That said, watch how Clay attacks this 2-on-1. He goes straight to the rack with his mind on one thing, scoring the ball. Had Bledsoe committed, it's an easy dump off pass to step for the layup. Perfect. It was clear the Suns did not come to play on defense. It's hard to imagine getting a fast break on an inbounds play, but Bledsoe is just jogging back and nobody is ready for Steph accelerating at 60% speed, and he gets into the lane in free throws. After another turnover, we get more triangle action as Bogut flashes across to the nail and Curry cuts back door behind him. This is Blind Pig out of the triangle, and it's glorious. A great way to stop the lob pass off a curl is to pressure the ball handler, and Knight has no chance around Rush and over Bogut. When he runs into Tucker, there's no chance for the defense to get back. At this point, the Suns were grasping at straws. This might have even been their best defensive possession, getting the Warriors into bad spacing and deflecting passes. Right up into the part, Tyson Chandler does the big no-no. Never save the ball back under your own basket. Of course it leads right to a wide open clay hop three. But the Warriors were just getting started. There are still 32 more points to go. Draymond had an opening for Steph cutting to the hoop, then the beautiful two-man game that gets Draymond into the lane and free throws. Now this basket was after a score when the defense should be in its best position to defend. And Steph attracts three defenders that run right at him and yet, it's Mirza Toledovic who ends up guarding Steph. For some reason, Toledovic is playing as if he's on offense, giving Steph the rim, and Draymond really threads the needle on this beauty. Playing against this kind of run is demoralizing, and at this point, the Sun's spirit had burned out. And this is where Klay Thompson detonated. Again, this is after a dunk by the Suns. A quick inbounds catches them all jogging back, no explanation for why TJ Warren wouldn't push up on Klay Thompson immediately, and this is like shooting practice. Toledovic was hot last night, making a ton of difficult contested jumpers, but he certainly wasn't helping defensively. He has no idea where the ball is, he doesn't sprint to get inside position on Klay, and it's another layup. The game is now out of hand, and when Knight goes out of control to the hoop and ends up on his butt, it's an easy fast break, and again, Toledovic simply cannot run with Steph Curry, who really, really needs to work on his dunk. And it's a sign of a poorly coached team when they can't get back on defense properly. Look, they've got four guys back ahead of the Warriors, 
and yet Alex Len runs to Clay Thompson. Nobody else recognizes this, and Clay barely has to do a crossover dribble to get right to the rim and the finish. This was my favorite action of the night. A double ball screen for Steph Curry, and the first screener, Clay Thompson, gets a pin down from the second screener, Bogut. Notice how two players go to Curry, making it a two on one out top. Bogut sets one of his patented and totally illegal screens, and Clay has another good look. So, sports fans, we've never seen a team like this do what they're doing to the NBA the way they're doing it. It's spread offense, they're shooting threes, raining down, and it seems impossible to stop them for four quarters. I cannot wait to see when they play the Spurs in January, because that's going to be a great matchup with a terrific defensive team that will not make the mistakes that we saw the Suns do, and we see most average to worse than average NBA teams do. Don't forget, if you want to watch the rest of this thing, we have a few more minutes. Click over on the link on the screen or in the description below, and you can get a couple more minutes of the rest of the third quarter. It's definitely worth your time. And our mobile app is coming out very soon, so don't miss that, because you'll be able to watch all of our videos full length, listen to all of our podcasts, and read our terrific articles all in one spot with notifications. So be on the lookout. It's coming out very soon once we get approved in the Apple Store. Well, thanks for joining us. Lots more coming up at B-Ball Breakdown. And don't forget, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel, we're a conversation. You win.